recent questions we got was how to do a panel from someone who has never done a panel before at a convention. That can be scary. Yeah, <laughs> just, just a little. Um, but it's something that definitely a lot of people like. I, it's something that, and so we're going to go through tips and pointers. I've done convention uh, yep. panels, you've done, done some. So it's on the, on the podcast, and it's um, it's a nice next level to go to in your convention experience. Yeah, it, it's giving back to the community and connecting with people on a different level. Yeah. So we're going to divide this into some things to do before the convention and some stuff to do once you get to there. Yep. So first and foremost, make sure you apply for a panel. Don't just show up and try and take over a room. Yeah, um, and each convention has different uh, panel pol procedures and yeah. policies, so make sure you read the website in depth before you apply. Yep, some of them have rolling applications, some of them wait for everyone to come in. So just inform yourself and keep an eye on things. And the deadline might be way sooner than you think it, it, it would be. Like, don't don't expect it to be a month before the con. It may it, be several months before, it, especially for a big con, because yeah. they get a lot of people and they have big schedules to maintain. Yeah. Um, but get it done as soon as, soon as the uh, applications go live, make sure you apply. Next is start doing your research. Research, research, research for your panel. And this is something you can do even while you're waiting to hear back about whether or not your panel got approved because this research, even if you don't get to do the panel this time, you can use it later on. Maybe you'll get approved at a different time and things like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes conventions take a really long time or put you on a wait list. So you don't want to be seven days before the convention and all of a sudden have to put together a whole panel. Um, another thing really is one, once you've been approved and are starting to do research, one of the things I think every panel needs are some visual guides. And this isn't just PowerPoint slides or something. There's a lot of different things you can do. You do cosplay panels and you usually have like a prop or uh, yeah, a garment. Yeah, I try to. It has something like one cool thing I've seen people do is they have examples that they pass around of different um, seam techniques and different types of fabric. Um, I have a couple books I really like that I pass around at panels and I encourage everyone to buy them because they're really useful. Um, but you should have some... PowerPoint by itself is, is okay, but you should have something else to really elevate you. Yep. Uh, you if you're talking about how to build model kits, make sure you bring a couple and just show what you've worked on. There's Once you start getting into it, there's plenty of resources out there. And it definitely makes a more engaging panel and it definitely makes your audience feel mm -hmm more interested because now they're a part of it. Um, and finally, last thing before you head off to the con is practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and no one's going to be perfect their first time. So get a couple friends, you know, practice in front of a mirror, just get used to the habit of speaking and practice with like a stopwatch or something so you can see how long you go. Um, any other tips for practicing? Um, no, pretty much that. I mean, if there's not someone really local, you can always do a Skype or a Google mm -hmm. Hangout session with someone to do that. But um, yeah, the stopwatch thing is, is key because not only do you want to make sure you fill up like the typical panels an hour, you want to fill up an hour, you also don't want to have too much stuff so you're just flying through your mm -hmm. material. And you want to, you also want to be able to break it up into subsections. So section A will be 10 minutes, next will be 10 minutes. That helps you keep your stuff consistent too. Mm -hmm. And moving, moving on to once you get on site for the convention, the first thing you have you want to do after you pick up your registration is go by the panel operations room or the head, uh, programming room. Each convention's a little different, but check in with the head of panels. Make sure they know you're there and yes, you're prepared to do your panel and, they, and everything like they that. Should, they should give you instructions on, on where to go and how to do this. If they don't, um, I would recommend asking them, just saying, Hey, when I get there, how do I let you guys know that I'm I'm there and ready to go? And hopefully they have their ducks in a <laughs> row and have that. If if you do panels at a convention, <laughs> you should have some kind of process where panelists come to you and say, "Hey, I'm here. I'm all set." That way, you don't, you can fill in empty panel rooms if people don't show up. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> um. Uh, so it's the day of your panel, whichever day of the con it is. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's P-Day, uh, and that sounds so wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing is, if you once you know which room your panel is in, and this is another thing, is if you've never been to the convention before, 
learn where your panel room is going to be because mm -hmm. many conventions call it by different names and things like that. But show up to the room, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes Yeah, early. I mean, like, if you're ever in some kind of rehearsal group, you know, like, if rehearsals are 4, you don't show up at 4. You show up before 4 so that you're ready to go at 4. It's the same thing for this. Don't show up at 4 if your panel's at 4. You want to show up at 3.50. you got to set up your equipment, make sure you're all set to go, have a sip or two of water, um, and then so you're ready to go right at 4. That way you're ready to finish right at whatever time your panel's finished, and then the next panel can start right away. And if, you, if you're worried about the panel ahead of you going over time, or if you just happen to see the staffer that might be running the room, just grab them, you know, pull them aside and just let them know, hey, I'm the next panelist, just so they know you're there and everything like that. Um, and once you get started, one of the first things that I think a lot of panelists actually forget to do is introduce themselves mm -hmm. and just tell them who you are. And you don't need to have a fancy title or anything like Elevator this. Elevator speech. Yep. I, speech by yourself. I tell people when I run a Mecca panel, hey, I'm Doug and I like giant robots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things like that. It, you know, but it, once again, it gives the people connection. Um, and so running your panel, if you're doing something like PowerPoint or Keynote, one of the things I tell everyone is don't read your slides verbatim. It gets very boring and people have all that information already. Use that as a template, but do other things beyond that. Have them just be talking points. Don't put like walls of text up on those things because people who are reading those are not paying attention to you. You want them to be talking points and then you elaborate and talk be off of those mm -hmm. instead of just reading. I'm, I'm a big fan of just doing like a picture and like a silly comment underneath or something just to keep it going. And it's a starting point, but not the main thing. Another point is avoid rambling. You know, sometimes you might get on a tangent or something like that. This is once again where practice really comes in. If you say, oh, this point is coming on too long. And if you're going on a point and you see you're going over time, just say, okay, I want to come back to that. If you want to ask me about it, talk to me after the panel and stuff like that. Because almost every panel I've ever done, I've had a couple people come up to me after I've done and want to talk more. So as long as you... You've got some time definitely use that time to talk to them and also speaking of timing leave room for questions and answers I mean, this is uh, something that across the board will help you because somebody might tell you something you didn't know but it also might give you a chance to explain more or anything like that um, and how much time you want it varies really from I usually try and leave about 10 minutes that's yeah. usually what works for and, me and save a couple topics too like a, maybe like really tangential side points in case for some reason you just have crickets and no one's ask, answering yeah. questions that way you're not just like you get 10 minutes left no one's answering questions <laughs> what the hell am i gonna do <laughs> the, so have something in your back pocket just in the, case the secret i've learned is in that time you ask the audience questions yeah that's that too. Or um, like play it with your friends and have, give them a question. <laughs> um, also, make sure you get feedback from people. Um, if, if you have something like Keynote or uh, PowerPoint going, make a slide with like an email address. And if you don't want to use your personal email that you use for everything else, it's easy enough to create a second one just for, you know, your kind of your convention identity and stuff. I love Mecca at gmail.com. I wonder if anyone okay. has that. Uh, we'll find out soon now. <laughs> but it, it's, and it's a great way to just get people to respond to you. And not just the audience, too. Uh, I think a lot of people sometimes forget to go to the staff and ask for their feedback because the staff member might say, oh, you know, we had this issue and things like this. Or notice, like, some things about the audience that you didn't notice. And it, once again, practice makes perfect with panels. Wow, alliteration. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, but you, you're only going to get better the more you do them. So no matter if your first time doesn't go as well, learn from your mistakes and keep making it better. And fake it till you make it, basically, and just keep trying. And also, of course, thank your audience. This is something that it's a nice little way to end cap it and just say, hey, thank you for coming. And I think on that note, Thank you for coming. <laughs> and if you have any other questions about
panels and stuff, please check out our forums on forums.nbcons.com. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, or Facebook. Or, or, or Twitter. All, 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 all the nice stuff. Tell us what panels you'll be running. Maybe we'll see them at an upcoming con. Right. But thanks for watching. Catch you next time.